and whatever your name is, we got a song for you. We're crucifying Brian. We've got him on the cross. Well, I hope that hippie blazed to death. I could not give a toss because we're crucifying Brian. We're banging in the nails. That hippie little funny man. Welcome to First Hand Television. Today we're delighted to have your boss, the director, animator, and new on Top Visa, Terry Gilliam. Bang, 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 bang. Bang it in those first three on it. Glad to see you, Terry. How are you? I'm fine. Glad to see you wearing a Frank. Yeah, no. A Frank on your chest. It's good company here. It's a friendly face I haven't seen for <laughs> many years, uh, but there he is. Uh, good man. So why, why are you here at the Roundhouse? Because tonight? you asked me, isn't it? As, as a personal uh, favor, because you know all the, the big people in town. Yeah. You, you started your career as an animator for, for Monty Python, mm. so we uh, dedicated our our studio into a, a sketchbook, so if, if you've if okay. you got a pen... Oh, I mean, I have to, I have to stand draw, and yeah. talk at the same time? No, or you can draw on your chair or the floor or the table. Jesus. You try to make it all as um, accessible. Okay, well, let's, I'll just start moving around and you start asking me questions yeah. and we'll see what we get. No, exactly. Um, yeah. So, uh, do you think it's easier to create to create films and be in the, uh, to start in the media industry t today as it was when you first started? I don't know. I think there's probably too many people trying to get in right now. There's too many film school, probably too many places like the Roundhouse encourage people like yourself <laughs> and these guys out there to get in the film industry. I'm, I'm still trying to get into the film industry, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think, I think what is happening now, there's so many film schools, there's so many um, uh, media courses, which I actually am opposed to because I think it's more important to be educated, to read, to learn things, because if you're going to be in the media and if you're going to have things to say, you have to know things. And if you only know about cameras and the media, what are you going to talk about except yeah. cameras and the media? <laughs> so it's better to be learning about philosophy and art and, and architecture and literature. These are the things to be concentrating on, it seems to me. And then you can fly. <laughs> <laughs> So yourself, when you when you when you first, how did you, how did you go to university to learn a different subject before you entered into animation? Yeah, I mean, I started in uni well, I started in university as a physics major. <laughs> After a couple of months of that, I realized I studied physics myself. There you go. <laughs> I was fine with the lower levels yeah. of physics. You got higher, I said, uh -uh. Yeah. and then I uh, actually became an art major. But I didn't like the art history professor. So after a few weeks, I said, enough of this. And so basically I became, the major I majored in was political science because there were only four required courses. And then I could take all these other elective courses. So I was able to take Chinese philosophy, economics, drama, art was able to be in there, sculpture, everything. So I got, I actually created a rather broad education for myself. And um, without thinking about a career, I think this is a dangerous thing when you start thinking about careers. You're already limiting what's possible, but try to learn as much as possible and then see what doors open. See which door is shut in your face and <laughs> move accordingly. Do you think that the, uh, your, the variety of your studies come, comes across in the films that you, in your create, that you created? I think so. I mean, say political science, something like Brazil is... Well, it was actually, you know, 20 years before events kind of become as obvious as they were in the film Brazil. Okay. <laughs> I kept saying when I was in New York last year, I was going to sue George Bush and Dick Cheney for the illegal <laughs> and unauthorized remake of Brazil. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, politics were a big thing. I mean, philosophy, religion are floating around in my films as well. That's all just from you know, taking an interest in it, reading, learning, discovering. So, um... I, I've read that you you give up, you gave up your uh, American citizenship. Yeah. Is that is that true or is that is that just a fact. media hearsay? No, it's okay. a fact. And so is this um, in against what the uh, American government at the moment? No, 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 I've lived here forty years and I thought it was time to come clean and become just British. Want to British. <laughs> <laughs> want to be one of you. <laughs> and and yeah, it was the prime thing. But there was always behind it. I'm tired of my tax dollars since I've been paying taxes in both countries for forty years. I thought I've paid enough taxes towards arms, bombs, planes. I do enough of that here in Britain, but in America, even more of your tax dollar goes to well, building better bombs. Well, you're known for your creativity and originality in, um, 
in in your films. And I wonder if, if we could take it take it away from the just for one second away from the drawing. If we could ask you to um, if if you were di if you were directing the interview now, what if you could take over maybe camera one? If I'm here behind the camera. Who's going to be in front of the camera? Are you going to go in front of the camera? Yeah. <laughs> you can see, uh oh, this is the guy who's been tagging my house. Yeah. So, uh, you're nicked, buddy. You are nicked. <laughs> this is good. It's a much, it's a far, far better work. Congratulations. Thank now, you. you want to take over this beast again? Yeah. I've seen your film Brazil and I thought it was amazing. Thank you. And I, re I really loved it and so do most people I know who've spoken about it. But I know I've, I've talked to a lot of my friends and they just, we just want to know what's it about in just in general. Well, it's about two hours and 20 minutes long, <laughs> that's what it's about. <laughs> <laughs> what's it about? It's about the world we live in, the world where fear rules the roost, where great bureaucracies have to survive at all costs. And so if those bureaucracies are based on anti-terrorism, what do you need? You need terrorists. So even if they're not real terrorists, an exploding boiler becomes a terrorist event. Uh, as well as these blockbusters, which are fun and cost mm. I, I, $300 million or something yeah, in you know, yeah. that range. But do you think that with uh, things on the internet like YouTube and these uh, video sharing sites with, and the, the access, the easy and cheap access to a, mm. like, uh, to uh, high definition digital cameras, or just even digital cameras, do you think that we'll see we'll, we'll be seeing a a lot of a lot of independent films on the net, which will gain popularity? Do you think that would t that start to take over from blockbusters? No, I think the, the, the problem with it is is films films cost a lot of money. Now, what's great on the web is to see uh, short films that people do. You know, five, ten, fifteen minutes. You can do that even with your camera. Yeah, no. Getting fil feature length films. It costs a lot more money, so some people still do it, but there's still going to be a need for the big Hollywood spectaculars. There's no question about it. I just think there's just too much of it, and what is happening at the moment is Hollywood putting all its money into these two hundred million dollar films or you know a ten million dollar film, and there's nothing in the middle where you can get you know, a beautiful looking film with more complex imagery and ideas, not necessarily ideas, but imagery, and those films are very hard to make now uh, because of the way the system is structured. And whether, that's why I'm hoping the big blockbusters will start collapsing. Uh, just a few more disasters, yeah. maybe the studios yeah. will go back and play it safe. It, but I think the world is going to have to start getting smaller again because it's, people have got to communicate on smaller levels. That's what, it's nice about this. I mean, look, you're, you're making movies up here. You're making, well, it's cheap and you've got bad actors. You a student here? When did you first come to the Roundhouse and what was it you came to see? When did I first come to the Roundhouse? Was, it must have been in 67 or 68 when I first came to England and the Grand Magic Circus was playing here. It's a French director named Jérôme Savary and they were doing uh, Robinson Crusoe and it was in the round so the audience was in the middle and it, all these series of tableaux were around the audience, you were trapped. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of the most wonderful moments was when Friday appears. And Friday appears stark naked, crawling over the heads and shoulders of the audience, dangling as he's crawling over them. It stuck with me forever. It was just <laughs> wonderful. It was so outrageous, so wonderful. And then the last time I was here, before it became what it is today, was uh, with, um, what's it called? Um, Oh, say the words. They opened the new round house. No, but it, it was the group, not Fred's Boot, as the show. Delagarda. Delagarda. We're crucifying Brian. We've got him on the cross. I hope that hippie plays to death. I could not give a toss because we're crucifying Brian. We're banging in the nails. That hippie little and funny man. Made I'm really glad he will. Bang, 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 bang. bang, bang. And one of our one of our crew has done a whole piece of coursework on you. No. Yeah. What a waste of life. <laughs>